you are not your fucking khakis. One of the greatest quotes of all time by Tyler Durden. For the uninitiated, Tyler Durden is a fictional character from the movie Fight Club. However, uh, that movie, as well as the book it was originally made after, are kind of philosophical, modern works on consumerism, identity, and I guess you could call security versus freedom. Really, I think what a lot of people in society trade off on a constant basis from fitting in and integrating well into society versus following your own path and your own roots. And I think you need a balance between both. Uh, but if you're wondering why I have the world's ugliest buzz cut right now, that's actually why I mentioned the quote in the beginning. We'll talk about that, but I promise it actually has a lot to do with fitness and kind of my lifestyle. And in today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you guys how my trainings looked for the last year that I haven't really actually fully talked about on YouTube yet. You guys are watching me do some warm ups here and I do things like this on a regular basis. And a lot of people actually don't see me um, performing these warm ups because I don't show them all the time because they're not really powerlifting YouTube friendly. I also want to talk about my vitality practices, uh, what I do every single day to stay healthy and to just work on uh, my vitality, my sense of well-being, which I think has become somewhat cliche thanks to all the female YouTubers out there who want to manifest everything and journal down their lives and they get a little massage on the weekends and they think they're, you know, upping their vitality and health and wellness. But I actually want to talk about shit that works and it's, it's way more intense than you would imagine. But before we even dive into that, we're also going to showcase uh, a deadlift and squat workout. This is my heavy day, but I'm currently in the off season. And when I'm in the off season, I always get way less specific and work on a lot of movement deviations. And I'm trying to prepare my body for the heavy lifting I'll be doing at some point down the road whenever I do my next meet. So you're seeing me do a lot of yoga poses and different active mobility drills here before I lift. And actually, before we even get into the video, let's start there. So what have I been doing for the last year? Well, a lot of you might be surprised to hear I've been doing yoga for about three to four times a week, very lightly. I'm still really stiff for someone who practices yoga. Like I'm by no means at the level of most yogis, but it's definitely complemented my lifting. And besides yoga, I've been doing cold exposure for the last couple of years, actually. And I finally got a cold plunge to really up the game. Two minutes. Uh, I've always had a fear of water my whole life. I can't swim. <laughs> and I've actually had people try to teach me how to swim feel good now it's right after you can feel that dopamine just hit <sighs> instantaneously noradrenaline adrenaline dopamine they spike i think it's by like 500 percent. go watch andrew huberman because we're all just saying what he says <laughs> but um man right after that dopamine hits but my whole life i've had a fear of water like severe fear water just freaks me out even in like totally heated normal pools with like people around I start panicking when I'm like swimming. I can technically stroke, like I can do a breaststroke, but not very well. And then on top of that, putting my head underwater, it just scares the shit out of me. I don't know what it is. I swear in another life I drowned or something, but it, it freaks me the fuck out. And doing that at the end right there, right when it said 320, I needed to make it to 325. I was like, I can do this. I can dunk my head in. And it sounds fucking corny, but that was so scary for me to do, especially when it was that cold. It's just not a fun time, but this is what it's about. Wim Hof talks about the cold being merciless, but almost godlike. To him, it's like teaching him something. And I actually think there's something to that. I think Mother Nature grew us here on this earth. It's, I know that sounds corny, but I think she grew us here with the extreme elements to prepare us for life. I think the cold in the winter prepares you to endure prepares you to be mentally tough and to also remove yourself to just accept and embrace and almost surrender to the cold same thing in the heat it's a very different kind of surrender i've done a lot of heat exposure in my life that is not hard for me i can last in saunas far longer than most people can because we do it for powerlifting meets and i don't have that same innate fear about the heat for some reason, I've actually gotten to the point where I was risking injury. And so I decided not to make weight like I used to before because I was so good at sitting in that damn sauna. 
But with the cold, man, it's merciless. And I think we removed ourselves from nature so we don't have the abilities to endure. I think the reason this helps with mental health is not from all the biological hormones spiking. I think that's secondary. I think it's purely a mentality thing. It's a consciousness thing. It's being able to what I was doing in there in that cold, even though I wanted to get out, it's that pain again. I'm releasing myself from the body. I'm trying to go to what some would call the real self, the witness, the, the observer, the conscious reality that transcends the body. And I try to sit and witness the body and just accept and surrender. And then it actually got easy. And then right when I started talking in the middle of it, it started getting hard again. Why? Because you enter into the mind. It was like it went from pretty easy to like, oh, my God, it's cold again because I started talking. Second, you concept everything. Second, you get into the conceptual. It all comes rushing back in. But if you stay as the witness teaches you something about life because cold showers aren't even close to what a cold plunge can do. And I didn't want to have to keep buying like a ton of ice all the time to do ice baths. And man, it is game changing for what it's done for my health, my mental clarity, my vitality, my deep sleep. I have ample records tracked, uh, showcasing all the benefits of cold exposure. I talked about that last time. I've also been doing heat exposure. I've also been doing a mental practice called fear exposure, where I expose myself to my fears. And actually one of my most chronic fears is drowning slash being underwater. Um, I still don't know how to swim very well. I hate the water. I hate going under the water. I instantly panic every time it happens. And it's something I've kind of, you know, just pushed under the rug my whole life. So what I've been doing at the end of my cold exposure routine is actually dunking my head in the water, which is really hard when it's that cold because my fight or flight system's already through the fucking roof. So you can imagine what that feels like. And I've also been practicing meditation for the last year. Um, in fact, 14 times per week. So that's twice a day. I never miss it. And I get at least 30 minutes a session in upwards of two to three hours some days. Um, and I also do breath work every single day. Um, really intense breath work. I do what's called Kriya yoga, which is not like a lot of people misunderstand what yoga is. Yoga is about balancing the body. It's not all movements. A lot of it is breath work and different practices to get your energy higher. And, um, while there's not a lot of ample evidence on it, I can tell you from someone who used to make fun of yoga, it's actually one of the most insane things I've ever practiced. And the breath work specifically is very intense. You can have full on psychedelic experiences from breath work. You can have, um, all a huge myriad of benefits with your energy. I actually sleep less than I've ever slept in my last three, four years, but my health and recovery scores are higher than ever. And it's because a lot of the practices I'm doing, and that's why I call them vitality practices. Uh, it's actually not uncommon for people in Eastern, um, um, cultures who practice yoga. God, look at that 585. That thing ripped up. I mean, I know I'm on metals guys, but still man, crazy deadlift session. I promise I'm gonna get to the lifting, but it's not uncommon for yogis to sleep four hours a night and be totally recovered and fine. These practices do amazing things for the body. And so that's why I practice them. And I want to actually just start the video off by talking about some of this stuff and showcasing my warm ups and some different movement things I'm doing. And you'll see how it incorporates later into the video. Now look at that fucking, this is what 635, I think is the math. Um, I'm so used to kilos. I don't even know off the top of my head anymore. I'll let you guys add it up. That was a 25 pound bumper on the end. And then here's 545. And this is a set of five. This was actually really, really easy, but my grip was giving out. Contrary to popular belief, uh, metal plates are not necessarily across the board easier. They generally are, especially for sumo, but it makes it tremendously harder on your grip. And that's actually why I was using these today. You can see there, it started to slip out at the end. And then after my sets of deadlifts, so I had a top single back down set of five. Now I have some RDLs as we're normally in a meat prep. I would do more volume on the, you know, competition lift or some close variant, but instead now I'm going more tension based and length based. And a lot of people ask me what the difference between RDLs and stiff legged deads are. And it's really simple. RDLs just cover full hip flexion to extension. And that's going to be different on everyone's mobility. For me, I can go all the way to the ground. And that's right when I reach maximal hip flexion on my availability of my mobility of my hamstrings. So the key is just to move your ass constantly back in space. And when you get to the point where you feel like you can't lower the weight anymore without moving the butt back and you have to round the back, then you uh, would stop there and come back up to the top. So it's very constant tension. They're much harder, in my opinion, uh, than stiff-legged deads, uh, well, at least when done with a full range of motion. 
And then stiff legged deads, you just go down to the floor. But if you've mastered your mobility, like I have, I do them off a deficit because obviously to the floor is basically my RDL. So I try to actually add a deficit in there to make it a little bit more challenging on the core. Now, really quick, don't tune out of the video, guys. Barbell Apparel, the sponsor of this video, has an awesome sale still going on. If you spend $99 or more, you get a free stealth hoodie, which is one of the sickest hoodies I've ever owned. And I genuinely mean that. I love that hoodie. I wear it all the time. The reason I like Barbell Apparel's clothes is they fit so good. And right now, my favorite thing from them is actually their chinos. Their chino pants are this cool hybrid between like jeans and chinos, and they fit amazing well they hug the thighs and glutes to kind of show off the legs but they're not like skinny jean nut hugger types although they do have tighter fitting ones if that's your thing but this brand is so good at producing clothes that help show off your physique while still looking sharp and in my opinion you got that more mature masculine look instead of that baggy clothes little 18 year old fuck boy with the broccoli haircut thing that's not my thing. If that's your thing, you know, whatever, go do it. But if you want to dress a little bit sharper, show off the physique, go check out Barbell Apparel, guys. They're taking care of your boy and they sponsor this channel. Now, return it back to your content. So that was my deadlift workout. Now, again, we're in the off season and this is where I want to talk about these vitality practices. I want to talk about my warmups movement. You can see here before I even started squatting because I did have some low bar squats this day, albeit really, really light. I'm actually only squatting every other week and deadlifting every other week. Now I do technically squat every week on my secondary day and I do some really light squats on this day. Today I only went up to 225 for tempo sets of 10 as deep as possible with no belt and sleeve. This is for mobility and tendon work. So what I'm trying to do is prepare the body to handle squats without actually inducing any recovery effect. And a lot of people always ask the question, well, how does this have benefit to strength carryover? And it does in the short term. But the goal here is to allow my body to recoup. I believe the human body works in cycles. In fact, I think everything in reality and existence works in cycles. You can just take a look at the universe. Planets spin in cycles. Stars and everything else out in the galaxy spin in cycles. Women's uh, menstruation comes in cycles. Men's testosterone and hormone levels and the human hormones of all, uh, of all the hormones come in cycles. And when you get in rhythm with uh, cycles, even the seasons come in cycles, you'll realize that it, we're not meant to train, in my opinion, heavy year round. I think old school periodization should come back where we take dedicated time, downtime, not necessarily to take time off, but to focus less on strength and more on other attributes. And so you're going to notice I'm doing a lot of finesse work. So one week I do squat finesse work and heavy deadlifts. The next week on my heavy day, I'll do heavy squats and deadlifts that are finesse based, like really light deadlifts with um, posterior chain finesse work. And when I say finesse, the reason I've chosen that word, because I just you know made that up the last year to describe the type of movements I do is because it's really pinpoint and precise. And, and I think the definition of finesse is something along the lines of a delicate movement. Uh, and, and that's kind of the idea here is to be really delicate and purposeful. And so what you can't see on film here is the amount of focus I'm putting in tension distribution on my feet and making sure I never jerk out of the hole. Like you normally catch a rebound on a heavy squat, especially with belt and sleeves. And when you do that, it puts a lot of pressure on the joints and tendons. Now, I don't think you need to go this extreme when you're a beginner in the gym, because your goal should be just to get stronger and bigger. I think you should do some of this stuff, but nowhere near as much as I do. But when you get to my level, you'll notice, and I've been in this game a long time, what ends people's powerlifting careers is never a lack of programming or technique. It's always injuries. And what I'm trying to do is make sure I'm always injury free and prepared so, uh, yeah, name of the game right now is just getting my body healthy. I'm doing the cold plunge every fucking day, meditating twice a day, every day, doing my breath work every day, sleeping well, even though I'm sleeping less, but recovery's through the roof. I feel amazing. And, um, you know, just on the mental aspect too, I'm always training my mind and, you know, again, maybe some of you might find this haircut to look cool. I think I look horrible because my forehead's big. The reason I shaved my hair is because I'm tired of worrying about my hair in the morning and you kind of wake up. And the, the reason I mentioned that Tyler Durden quote earlier is because it's ridiculous how much we base our existence around other people's thoughts, even things like our haircuts and styles and the cars or, you know, trucks we want to buy. And I just don't think that's 
a way to be happy in life. I think the more you integrate, the more you crave security and the more you deintegrate, meaning pull away from mainstream and the herd, um, the more freedom you have, but with freedom comes responsibility and you need a balance of both. None of us, or at least the vast majority of us cannot live completely off grid. We need people to survive. And I think life is better with having society around. And so you have to integrate in some form to that. And I know we're getting kind of philosophical in this video, but stay with me, <laughs> but you have to understand that that integration can start to become slavery. And when you start to base your entire existence and life around what other people think, even if you think you're doing it for yourself, like what makes a haircut popular? If there were zero people on this earth, you wouldn't give two shits about what your hair looked like. Like if you're the only human left on planet earth, you wouldn't care. Right. And so I do these mental practices from time to time to just check the ego, to make sure I'm not caring uh, and just kind of leaning into different kinds of discomfort, whether it's physical discomfort and training stress or mental discomfort and training stress. Anyway, back to the training, ATG split squats elevated. I really want to master my ankle mobility this year. And you can see even off this elevation with my squat heel, my ankle still has to come up. I have amazing posterior chain mobility. I have really good hip mobility, at least for a power lifter, not by, you know, yoga standards or something, but I have very poor ankle mobility and it's from years of neglecting my ankles. So I'm actually regressing this movement, even though I used to do it off the floor and I'm going to try to slowly get the heel to stay down on this height. I got, I think three bumpers stacked underneath this. And then once I can get the heel down, I'm going to progress these, uh, one plate downwards at a time, or even half a plate, maybe throw a 25 pound bumper under there and really just work the end range. And what that does is it trains your VMO. It trains your knee tendons. It trains all these, uh, muscles, ligaments, and tendons and your mobility to withstand deeper and more extreme positions. And so then when you're squatting super heavy, nothing really bugs you. Now, right after this, I did some pancake work. Um, I used to be better at these. If you guys watched me a few years back when I was running our prime program, which I no longer have available on our website, our group coaching programs are just fusion, um, our beginner program, which is, uh, the prime way. And then, uh, our SBD powerlifting program, I just discontinued it cause it didn't have a lot of popularity cause no one likes doing this stuff apparently, but I love it. <laughs> and I was doing these at one point being able to touch my chest to the floor. So I've definitely tightened up with all the weight gain. And right now I'm cutting and really trying to remobilize this deep, um, pancake position. And I hope to be able to get to the splits someday, probably not anytime soon, but that is kind of my long-term goal. I use some weight to kind of help me. Normally I would use a partner, but I am a sad boy living alone in the country. I'm just kidding. I actually love being alone out here in the country, but I don't have anyone to push on my back unless I were to yell at my dogs to come and jump on my back or something, but they would just scratch me. Um, so I am using a plate to kind of weigh myself down and I'm going to just slowly progress these. I've actually injured myself doing pancakes before. So be careful, ease your way into this. You sumo guys will have a much easier time doing this. I had my client Travis at one point, he was getting full chest and like belly on the floor, like super deep and wide. He has really amazing hip mobility. Travis, if you're watching this, bud, we actually got to get you back to doing this after your meet. He's competing here soon. We'll get him back on, on the grind of some of this movement based stuff. Now, after I wanted to hit up some abs and I'm thinking rotation here. So obliques, but from a functional standpoint, getting some protraction in the scapula and then rotating. So it's great for upper abs and obliques. I don't like training obliques heavy, but I do think you should train them. If you train them heavy, they're going to look blocky. And even though I just went on my Tyler Durden rant, uh, admittedly, I don't want my waist super blocky. And honestly, um, I don't want my waist blocky because it makes me immobile. In fact, the heavier and bigger I get, the less I enjoy my life. <laughs> so I'm, I'm trying really hard to balance my powerlifting goals because I absolutely love lifting heavy, but with like how I just feel on an every day to day basis. And it, it kind of blows my mind how little people care about how they move and feel during the day. I love that I'm limber for a 225 pound jacks guy. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, doing some L sits here after these are amazing and super fucking hard. I would say I'm pretty good at these. The hardest part's the mobility. When you hip flex like this with knees straight, the hip flexor, because it's bi articular starts to fight at both ends of the joint and they get tricky. So once I got tired of these, I started just doing some knee ups to get some more ab work here. 
absolutely killer heavy day. This is what my off-season training is looking like. It's what my vitality practices are looking like. You guys stay tuned for a new YouTube channel. I'm going to be diving into all the info in depth. I can't do it on this one because it won't get the views. Uh, you know, I've built an audience around certain uh, video. So I got that new channel coming out for that. If you guys are interested in our group coaching programs, we incorporate a lot of the stuff you're seeing here in the seasons, every different season. We just released our latest uh, video and Q and a, um, I had to take a break for a few weeks. If you guys were part of our group coaching, cause I was getting the studio and everything set up at the house, but now we're up and ready again. You guys are going to see the new YouTube channel coming out soon too. So anyway, hope you enjoyed your philosophy lesson. Hope you guys uh, had some fun watching me lift heavy. As always, love you guys all, and I'll see you in the next video.